Hey guys, welcome to Insiders Wrestling. Jamie and Callum here, as always. And today we have a very special guest, wrestling royalty, Shaw Guerrero. Thank you for joining us. How are you? I am wonderful. Thank you for the uh, very flattering introduction. <laughs> he's, he's good at flattering introductions. That's his specialty. <laughs> you make me blush. So hopefully my lighting is, uh, is <laughs> left that out for me. <laughs> Uh, it's true though, I mean, you you know, you talk about wrestling royalty and names, Guerrero, you can't not mention. So, uh, it was the truth. You are wrestling royalty in my eyes. So, so how are you anyway? How is uh, you in Chicago, I believe, isn't it? Uh, yeah, I'm in Chicago. Um, it's as well as it can be right now. Um, I'm sure you guys are very aware of the dumpster fire of a situation we have over here. Um, <laughs> uh, like. But no, we're doing good. Chicago is slowly opening up, so um, things are kind of happening a little bit. We've even been able to have a couple of wrestling shows around Chicago, so that's like promising. Uh, so, but yeah, I'm good, man. We're just, you know, the hustle. You know, we all we all get that. We're all in the business. We, we know Absolutely. the hustle. So, <laughs> we, speaking of the wrestling in Chicago, we have been following it quite a bit because Chicago has got such a good wrestling scene. I mean, Chicago has got the best fans in the world for wrestling, if you ask me. And, um, it, it's great to see some indies popping up, putting on shows, socially distanced shows, uh, warrior wrestling, freelance, you know, awesome, awesome promotion. So well done as well. In the current pandemic as well, it's obviously hard to put on what would be a normal wrestling show. Yeah. But at least we've still got some kind of wrestling going on. So that's good. Yeah, for sure. I was actually just um, like definitely Warrior Wrestling. They just have a huge stadium series, which is awesome. But yeah. um, we just went to a Zello Pro show and uh, what my husband was on. And um, man, they had like eight people i'm not kidding you after every match like scrubbing down the ring and making sure everybody was good i swear to god i even saw them like sanitizing the audience at one point like everybody just sit down but uh it was good they, they really uh put on a good show and same with warrior you know we're just trying to make sure you know the talent's safe and uh that's oh, of course the audience is safe too so it's happening slowly but surely it's the new norm yeah that, right it's the new norm you, you hear it all the time it's the new norm and wrestling is definitely being hit by that new norm I, I to the point where I can't actually remember off the top of my head a time before it it seems like this has just been you know, <laughs> oh there's the cat there she yes! is yay <laughs> they get me excited I'm like hey kitty <laughs> If you're not giving her attention, she'll come and get it. So, um, yeah, I give up. She's managed to open the door all by herself, so I, I just give up now. So, <laughs> well, hopefully, one. if I'm lucky, one of my cats will will come in and. and I hope so. Themselves. <laughs> but no I'm, I'm with you for sure like i it's hard when when i watch like old wrestling or not even old like god just like wrestling from last year like yeah. just to study and i'm just like oh my god look at how close the audience is to one another right or like even watching a movie like watching just like a normal scene in a restaurant i'm like oh my god rona like yeah. <laughs> it's, it's hard it's hard I, to like imagine a time before I managed to go to a few WrestleManias a few years back, and there there was a crowd at WrestleMania 32, which was a, I think it was like a shoot 90,000 or something, and I was like, that's a lot of people. But whenever I watch those clips back now, it kind of makes me feel a bit anxious seeing 90,000 people in the same place. It like, is, yeah. Like, we have anxiety now about it. It's so weird. I'm like, where's your mask? Yeah, where's your mask? <laughs> Sanitized. Yeah. Well, even then, like, I'm getting back into the ring and, like, I'm training. And, like, it's so funny every time we go into a training session, like, we're all a little nervous. Like, hey, man, like, do I shake your hand? Do I do the elbow? But then it's like, wait, what are we doing? We're literally going to be in each other's faces and yeah. armpits and just, like, we um, still like five yeah. minutes. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. there's still a lot of anxiety around all of that for sure. Yeah. It's a scary time. Where, where, where just at the minute getting stricter again, aren't we, Callum? And um, there was a few announcements yesterday, so we're, we're going back to the air, uh, being strict again at the moment, with a big oh, national, really? yeah, big national TV uh, statement last night with new restrictions coming in, but I think it's basically, it's creeping up, so it's to stop it now before it, it goes past. Um, but like you said, yeah, I'm still, I'm still seeing people outside, you know, the, the hugging and the shaking hands, I'm like, you're like, seriously, like, 
come on, we're grown up. You know, yeah. what are you do. You yeah, know, we're, I think we're waiting for the other shoe to drop over here too, just because flu season is coming around, and uh, you know, we're right yeah. into fall, so we're we're all just kind of like. Oh, like we're, yeah. we're waiting for it <laughs> that's happened to me today I, I woke up this morning i was just saying to jamie i've I've got a cold like um it's always the same like as soon as it starts to the season starts to change i get a cold but now when i get when you get a cold it's like is it a cold or <laughs> <laughs> it's scary you're like yeah. is it sinuses is it a cold or is it the rona and so it's exactly like, right even though yeah. the common cold still exists your brain's just like but what if it isn't? <laughs> so, yeah, even just yeah. like I sneezed in public the other day and I was like, oh shit. Because yeah. I was just so nervous. Because, like, and like, believe it or not, I had a couple of people like, like, just look at me like, oh God. And I was like, no, like, I'm good, I swear. <laughs> oh, it's, it's crazy, you know, crazy times. And uh, like we said, getting back to wrestling, it's crazy times for wrestling. and. What uh, you said, you're getting back to the ring as well. You're training, you're getting back into the ring. You've picked a great year to do it. Um, <laughs> I know, <laughs> I'm like super before? timing right now. Oh, yeah. god, <laughs> how's it been for you getting back into the ring then? You know what? I was actually pleasantly surprised because, um, like it's been a six year hiatus for me to be like, um, wrestling necessarily. I mean, I've been doing announcing and commentating here and there, but um, I you know, at any wrestler, you know, if you take more than a week off, you're like that first bump back, you're like, oh God. But um, no, I was actually pleasantly surprised. Um, I had the opportunity to get to work with Justin with Dustin Rhodes um yeah. over at AEW for a little bit. They were kind enough to let me work around with their girls. And even here in Chicago, I'm working, um, I'm like getting in the ring at freelance. And my body's been feeling really good. I'm actually like, oh man, like like the bumps feel good, everything feels great. It's just, you know sucking wind like just because you know you have to like be constantly in the um in the ring in order to get your wind up but that's what i'm working on right now is just having matches and you know getting ready for that indie scene which will hopefully open up at some point yeah I, I mean, what are you looking forward to the most about coming back to the ring you said it's been six years what is it you miss the most about wrestling i mean it's i a, the people, like, that's always been one thing I've been, I've said, because this business is hard, you guys know that, and so it's, um, but you miss the really cool people you work with all the time, um, so I'm happy to be back into that, and then honestly, just being in front of a crowd and performing, I miss performing so much, and, um, like, I've been performing in other areas, like in dance and in burlesque uh, for the past couple of years, but um, there's nothing like a wrestling audience. There is nothing like a wrestling audience. I actually have a story if you guys want to hear it. Oh, absolutely. Uh, um, <laughs> yeah. So I was on Chris Jericho's um, Rock and Wrestling Rager part duh um, this year. It's so weird to say that it was this year before everything went to hell. And um, I was on there with my dance group. We were performing. And um, but anyway, we go into port at the Bahamas and we, we pull up and we're right next to like Disney Cruise Line and whatever else, like Royal Caribbean and leave it to the one boat that has a like a shitload of wrestling fans on there, like to start chanting at the other boats, like your boat sucks, <laughs> pop, 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 pop. And like, just like, like slinging insults at the other boats. And I'm like, no other boats do that. Because <laughs> there is a boat full you of wrestling fans. any other boat in the world that chants at another boat. Like that's only gonna be a wrestling fan boat, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, but it's, I don't know. It's just like, it made me just like love wrestling fans like all the more, because it's just like, we are, like a special breed, like no other fan out there for sure. So I'm just excited to be back and um, hopefully like get to prove myself the way I want without kind of being managed, um, I guess by like big brother, if you will. And so yeah. I'm, I'm kind of excited to see what I bring to the table and what I want to portray more than anything. I think that's one of the things, um, go on, go on, Jimmy. I was gonna say, I know you said obviously you, you've been training with AW with the girls with Dustin, uh, what's that been like learning from Dustin? Because I know he's opened up his own school, like it's coming. That that's like one hell of a mind um, to be going back to to learning from. What was that like with Dustin? Oh my god, it it was. Um, I'm not gonna lie, I was like really nervous because I just like. I mean, the Rhodes family has been um, very uh, important to the Guerrero family because I mean, like um, Dusty is the one that coached mom, um, when she was at WWE and Dusty actually coached me when I was at NXT and FCW. 
So like, they've just always been integral to yep. our success, especially the women of the Guerrero family. And so I was really excited, but Dustin is, um, is family and he made me feel like family. Um, so I was like, it was weird. It was like a mixture of like having like my emotions all bunched up because I'm like, I kept apologizing. I was like, I'm sorry. It's just been a minute for me. And all the girls were, um, like the AEW roster is wonderful. Like all ex extremely supportive and, um, all the girls were wonderful to work with. And yeah, but Dustin is a great mind. I like want to try and find a way to get down to Texas and be able to like visit his Academy. Um, like, did you guys get to see, like, I loved his promo video for the Academy because it made me laugh because he was in the middle of this huge, beautiful quote. And he's like, you know who said that? I don't fucking know. And I was like, oh my God, that's, that's Dustin. That's a very Dustin thing to do. I like that. No, but his training is amazing. And anybody that has an opportunity to be able to um, go into his Academy, do it. Do it. Such a great mind for the business. And he's one of those guys who even though he's in like the twilight of his career, so to speak, he's doing his best work. He, he's so he's good for his age. He should not be that good. <laughs> he, he's incredible. Like, honestly, like his day, like getting to like witness like what he does in a day, like blew me up. Cause I was just like, he trains with all the women for like um, a couple of hours in the morning. And we're, keep in mind, we're like in the middle of like just crazy humidity in Florida, like wrestling outside. And then he goes into producing matches and then he like has amazing matches that same night and cutting these kick-ass promos. And I'm just like, you know what, man, <laughs> like he's on another level. Yeah. I've, I've always, I, I, I've always been a Dustin far. I think he's the natural suits him so perfectly that, that Monica, uh, I, I, I love the guy. I can't talk highly enough about the guy. I think he's fantastic. And, um, but I, I, I want to go back to the beginning as well because obviously I, I'm a huge fan, you know, obviously your whole family, your dad, your, your granddad, your uncle. Uh, obviously you've grown up, so I mean, did you always want to be? Was it always I'm going to be in the wrestling business when you was growing up? I mean, because so, that's probably all you knew. No, that's a wonderful question. And thank you for saying that. Um, I appreciate that. Um, honestly, when I was younger, I think like until I was 15, I never thought I was good enough for it because I, I was in the era, like, of course, like my dad was tearing it up and kicking serious ass, you know, all through that time. Um, but the women, it was a different story, you know, um, like it's like, I always thought they were seriously badass and really cool, but we didn't have a lot of diversity necessarily at that time. And so I never thought I was pretty enough, skinny enough or just that I even had it in me, honestly. And um, and my first love was dance. So that was always like my main goal is um, dancing and singing and stuff like that, which was wonderful. But it wasn't until like I was around, I wanna say like 18 that I really felt like I could do this. And that was um, when I was with my mom, I was traveling with her um, just to like, I don't know, kill time. And also because I was interested in the women's product at the time and um, John Laurinaitis, like happened to notice me like hanging out a lot backstage and he was like yeah you should try out and I just was like okay and literally literally they set it up I didn't know if I was gonna shit the bed or if I wasn't even gonna walk out of there because I've never taken a bump in my life and um they opened a door for me and then they happened to want to give me a shot so that's how it all kind of happened but it wasn't until I was like 18 that I was like oh maybe I can do this it wasn't that I didn't want to my whole life it was just that I didn't think I could so. so you've always had the love and the passion for it anyway. You just yeah. didn't think something that was realistic for you, but you quickly, I imagine you quickly found out it was because even when we were watching as fans, when you were in NXT, you, one of the things I realized quickly was you've got the character down to a T. Like okay. you've got the character, the, the character work is incredible, which is one of the reason, reasons I'm looking forward to seeing you come back to the Indies because we'll be able to see that, but your own version of it. Thanks. No, I really appreciate that. And like major kudos to, to dust to Dusty Rhodes, because like he was the big, like father behind me, like helping me with all that. But um, yeah, I'm excited, like, because I've never felt better in my life, because obviously, I'm not struggling with my eating and my body as much anymore. Like I'm focused, like when I'm in the ring now, I'm focused on my wrestling rather than like, how am I looking? Am I looking skinny enough? Oh, my God, like all of those like, demons kind of looking lurking around so i'm excited because i feel better than ever with wrestling but then i'm also like super scared because i'm not going to be hiding behind a gimmick this time i'm gonna be 
straight up Shaw Guerrero. That's how I'm going to the ring. And so oh. it's awesome, but I'm also like, oh dear God, I'm putting myself out there and it's scary. It's scary. Yeah. I, I'm glad the fans are gonna react. Because it'll be the first time in, in wrestling that you have been able to be yourself. Like, yeah. like so you, you're not being told who to be. You're not another name. You're Shaw Guerrero. And yeah. you've got <laughs> no pressure. Like, <laughs> <laughs> no, no pressure at all. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I, I believe me, I, I feel the weight of that, of being able to have my name, which it's an honor, but it's also like, all right. Here we go. And I'm not saying like I'm going to go out there and like give a five star match. I would love to like right off the bat. But like that's the beauty of the indies is that it's a growing platform and it's a place for you to figure it out and to be able to work in front of different audiences all the time. Yeah. Um, Because sometimes in Florida, even though we did get to travel a lot with FCW, but it was only in Florida. So we kind of got used to like, how does this audience react? What is this audience like kind of thing? So now I'm hoping I can travel i'd love to be able to get over to england and maybe japan i don't know we'll, we'll see what happens it, that's the well, best the UK scene, we say this everybody that we always have on we always tell them the uk scene at the minute is ridiculous there is literally there's probably a promotion in every city and it is wherever you go there's a wrestling company so come on over here you'll probably be here for a year it's oh just my God. <laughs> Honestly, especially with like how our country is handling everything right now, my husband and I have plenty of times been like, yo, we need to move. Like, this is, this is not hey, good. We need to get out of here. Don't, I'll just say this don't come to the UK because we're not doing much better. Go to oh. Australia or New Zealand or something. Like, oh my God. No, I, I, hope, I would like to go back to Australia though. I actually got to work with a promotion over there and I like, wish I could have stayed longer. So I'm just going to like drag my husband around because he's working now too um, yeah. on the Indies. So I'm just going to be like, you know, we just need to like go pair up and just like tour everywhere. Just go everywhere we can. It's the best way to get experience, isn't it? Like going to different countries, doing all the, all the Indies. Like you said, it's, it's the best way to fast track yourself to, you know, finding out who you are, what your character is going to be. Um, learning so much stuff because you're always against so many different types of wrestler. Um, is there any indie promotions in particular that you have your eye on that you that you would like to wrestle for? Oh, absolutely. Like, I mean, um, as far as right now in Chicago, like I'm just trying to like get my way into like Zello and Freelance and um, and Warrior, absolutely. Um, but like, I have a friend, Bull James, um, that has definitely like got me in contact with um with eve promotions over um across the pond with you guys and um i mean i would love to be able to experience japan and be able to go into a dojo at one point mm. um but sorry i'm like nervous i'm like oh my gosh what are all the promotions i'm trying to like try to get into like big time wrestling and i'm trying to go into prestige here in the u.s so it's just so hard with the pandemic because i'm just like I don't know. Like, I don't know. It's like all the promotions like I want to work for and keep working for are in New York right now or in that area. And that is just like, like not happening. So, but honestly, I'm open to anything. Um, and like you said, like, that's how you gain that. That's how you get better and whatnot. I'd also love to go to Mexico at some point too. And, you know, yeah. try my hand over there. Not going to lie. Hella intimidated. Cause that's my, my, my grandpa and my dad, yeah. my uncle. So I'm a little like, feel like it's right. something you've do you feel like that's something you have to do though to like you know wrestle in mexico i mean <clears throat> i it's like i want to say yes but i'm also like this time around with me coming back into wrestling like first of all i want to like lay the groundwork wwe and nxt that whole experience was wonderful and they really did teach me so 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 much i got to work with amazing coaches there um, but there, there was a lot of pressure and yeah. there's just this, there's this, um, I don't know, you, you just kind of drink the Kool-Aid over there. And it's just like, I feel like the whole time my shoulders were up, like the whole time I worked there because the, the tension is just really intense. Um, so I feel like this time I'm not putting pressure on myself to do anything. I'm just going to see, like, I'm going to ride the wave. I'm going to do the best that I can. I'm going to have fun, which mm -hmm. was like, not necessarily a priority before, <laughs> So I'm really just going to try and have fun with this and see where it takes me. I'm also hoping to continue to keep dancing. So um, I'm going to try and juggle all of the things. 
That's interesting, actually. You said the, about dancing, and what we've heard from a few people before is wrestling is basically just a dance. How how has dancing helped with professional wrestling? You know what? Um, dancing helps your memory. Um, like with the dance group that I'm in that was on Chris Jericho's cruise, and by the way, we're like going again in October of next year. Um, we have an hour long set. And like that, like consists of like over, God, I want to say like 15 dances. And so like, yeah, that's a lot. It's a lot um, of memorization and a lot of stamina yeah. for sure. Um, but I mean, I absolutely agree. Wrestling is a dance and it's even more so of a dance because like, God, you're like calling half the shit on the fly out there. Yeah. And it's like, but just like with dance, you have to trust, you have to trust the people that you're on stage with and that you're in the squared circle with. So um, yeah, it's a lot, a lot of beautiful similarities, but I have to say wrestling makes me so much more nervous than dance. Like I can't even, oh, oh God. Yeah. It just makes me so much more nervous. <laughs> well, obviously coming back to wrestling and you're, you're, you're getting to be yourself as Callum said, um, are you, are you, are you going back? Are you watching tapes of like perhaps your dad and then your uncles and your grandfather? Um, are you bringing your own name? back to the forefront so to speak no i um i love watching my dad I, I like study him a lot and so like and i want even though i'm doing this my way absolutely um i'm totally gonna pay homage to to him and my grandfather like i'm definitely bringing back the gory bomb because i freaking yes. love that thing um <laughs> i'm just saying like a, no one can do a three amigos like a guerrero can do a three amigos and uh i still got those down pat um and I'm, I'm hopefully gonna uh get that frog splash all squeaky clean for you guys when i come back but um i definitely now i'm gonna pay a lot of homage to him um and because that that makes me happy but it's just like i guess maybe also i didn't really have the opportunity to really do that at fcw and wwe because like like they kind of were like we're gonna start you fresh and not even have you kind of associate with that so um yeah, I'm just excited to see how that goes. But I definitely, I study my dad a lot. Study, um, I study a lot of Kurt Angle. And um, I mean, I love watching Dean Malenko. I mean, my dad and Dean Malenko's like iconic match uh, makes me like, I, I love watching that. I can watch that all day. Yeah, yeah. incredible. Thinking about that, um, obviously, when you joined the next team, the change you name, did that kind of piss you off? Did you want to be Guerrero? Was it Raquel, Raquel Diaz your name was changed yeah. to? Yeah, uh, that was that was the name. That was the um it was, you know what, like it was a mixture of emotions, honestly. Um yeah, like initially I was I was kinda like, oh, okay. Like I thought that was kind of why y'all wanted me here. Um, but it was more honestly like at the time when they told me like, no, we don't want you to be a Guerrero because if you mess it up like no pressure and i was kind of like god damn all right um but like you know i guess that conversation made me feel all the pressure because i felt like i had to earn my name which i understand like that that has happened i mean like ray mysterio had to do the same thing he had to earn that name mm -hmm. um but i feel like i i don't know i feel like i've earned the name in a lot of other aspects of my life with overcoming the demons just like how my dad did overcoming addiction overcoming all of those things and i did spend three years in developmental so i'm just like you know what we need to just like put the big girl panties on and go out there and like i am a guerrero and so that's what i wanted to show everybody like yes like this is what what this looks like so i'm hyped just listening to you talk about it to be honest like I'm oh, excited okay. to see you come back just because I feel like we only got to see like a glimpse of what you can do in NXT. Uh, and nice. when you're coming back with the pressure, like, but the, it's good pressure. Like, I think yeah. you have to have some pressure for it to be exciting. And I'm just excited to see what you can do, especially if you're bringing back the three amigos, because oh. like I said, no one does it like a Guerrero. And <laughs> to my, I've got to say, I was talking to my mom earlier, um, and when I said who we were speaking to, she was like, really? And she was really impressed because her two favorite wrestlers ever are Rey Mysterio and your, your dad. Uh, whenever the Free Amigos happened, she'd pop every single time. Like the Free Amigos and the Frog Splash, two of her favorite moves, and the 619. So I had to, I, I'd say something because she's a, she's a, I'm sure if you come back and you're popping out Free Amigos and Frog Splashes, my mum will be a fan too. So. Oh. <laughs> 
hope I can get her on my side for sure. Oh, she will be. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and I mean, we, we would be amiss if we didn't mention as well, how good and natural is your mother? I mean, oh, uh, she is a badass man. I, I'm a lucky, I'm a lucky lady that I get to have that woman as an example for me, and um, just like to get to learn from her and whatnot. Like she, yeah, my mom, my mom is kick ass and a little scary, but mainly kick ass. She, she's incredible. <laughs> how quickly she took to the business, I couldn't believe it. Like when when she first appeared in WWE, it was like okay, so it's. You, you knew who she was, but you didn't know she was had so much talent and character behind her. And then she became almost like she was her own character in her own right. Like she she earned that place and deserved all of the the love, the hate, the reaction, and everything she got was just so justified. Like uh, you must be proud of her as a daughter. I'm extremely proud of my mother, and um, yeah, it was just crazy because I feel like I mean. It, it was just such a hard time for us when she went into WWE because, like, that was right when my dad passed away. And, yeah. like, I mean, God rest his soul. Obviously, I'm sure he wasn't expecting to pass that quickly um, and that suddenly. So, like, nothing was handled and yeah. whatnot. Like, nothing was taken care of. And my mom, like, didn't have a college degree. She didn't know what she was going to do. And then, thank, thank God, like, Vince McMahon did call her up and, like, gave her an opportunity. And... Like, because, and she ran with it. Like, she ran with it. It was so hard for her, especially to leave us, like, right after, like, this huge tragedy. And, like, we also picked up and moved right after my dad died. And it yeah. was just, there was a lot going on. And she yeah. handled it with so much grace. And she kept at it, even though, like, many times, like, she wanted to, like, quit because it was just, like, such a hard place to be. And, and not everybody was kind to her when she was there. But she... Yeah, she took it and ran. I'm so she proud of her. It. She really oh, did. Yeah. And she's, oh, yeah. she's killing it right now in AEW. Isn't yeah. she? I'm so proud I, of her. Oh, I was so happy. I, I mean, when you hear the excuse me come over the PA system, like, I was like, <laughs> Vicky Guerrero, oh my God. Like, and she, she has that knack of being like, I know a character is meant to be annoying the way she says, excuse me, but you can't help but love Vicky. Like, I was so happy to be annoyed by her. So when she came back to AEW, I was like, this is the perfect place for her. She's definitely got a place in AEW. Absolutely. I'm so proud of her. I'm excited to see um, what she does with Nyla Rose. And because yeah. um, she will definitely like, uh, I mean, Nyla Rose is already just such a powerhouse and she's already held the AEW um, World Women's Championship. So I'm excited to see where they're going to go with this. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm loving it. And I like you said, a badass. I mean, come on, she took a tombstone from The Undertaker. I mean, how badass is that, right? Yeah. <laughs> I know. Oh, my God. Like, literally everybody in my family has pretty much been tombstone by The Undertaker, including my husband. And I'm just like, well, when am I going to have it done? Like, <laughs> we got to finish the circle. <laughs> Imagine, imagine uh, that you, you're the odd one out because you haven't taken a tombstone from The Undertaker. Like, you know what, though? That. That still sounds I'm, I'm all right though. with that. I'm, I'm all right. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Well, yeah, we will, uh, before we start wrapping up, um, I have to tell you a story as well, obviously. I, I had the pleasure of meeting your father um, in 2004 uh, in the UK. And I was one of them nerds that waited at the end to meet the wrestlers when they were going to the coaches. And your, your dad actually came across and took time to sign every single person's autograph. And that's when I, that's when I thought, you know, yeah, because some guys, they say, yeah, great, this is the best city, you know, glad to be here. But when it was your dad, it was kind of like you genuinely believed it. So it's nice to tell you that story of how much your dad meant to me Aww. and the fact. Um, he, he took the time out and literally signed every single autograph, talked to everybody. So that's that's my story to... To, to let you know how much he meant to me. Uh, oh, thank and, you. And I think I can speak for both of us. Uh, I think he means a lot to every wrestling fan. And saying that, your, your whole family too. Um, you're all, it's a ridiculously talented family. Like, yeah, it seems like everybody has a place in the business or has some talent in the business. And I'm sure we're just seeing the start of what you've got to offer to. 
Oh, guys, thank you so much. I love when people talk about my dad. That's how we keep his memory alive and well. And I hope I can continue that legacy and uh, make you guys proud. And like, thank you so much. Like, I really appreciate that. Well, I mean, while you're here as well, before we, we let you go, um, is there anything you want to plug? Social medias, merchandise, what's coming up? Yeah, man, sure. So, like, you can follow me on Instagram um, at Shaw Guerrero, Twitter, Guerrero underscore Shaw. I have a Twitch if you guys want to watch me fail miserably at video games <laughs> um, at Shaw Guerrero. Uh, just ha I just um, got a pro wrestling tea site um, with merch. I feel like can't believe I have merch right now. Um, but <laughs> literally, Pro Wrestling Tees slash Shaw Guerrero. And yeah, make sure you guys uh, catch me and my dance group on Chris Jericho's Rock and Wrestling Rager Triple Whammy in October of next year. So we got lots to um, lots going on, and hopefully you guys will be seeing some uh, seeing me in the indie soon. So fingers awesome. crossed. Hell yeah, we will. And I'm sure Callum will, will tell you as well. Now I know you've got a pro wrestling tease. My my gimmick is I seem to buy everybody who, who comes on this show. I buy their merch. So, so he's uh, never got any money. He just <laughs> so many interviews. He's like, oh, I'll buy the t-shirts, and he does, and then he wonders why he has no money. So <laughs> it just so happens, Shaw, that I get paid on Friday. So I'll probably venture in over to pro wrestling tease, and I'll be buying some of your gear. <laughs> Thanks, guys. I appreciate it. Well, hopefully, when I go across the pond, uh, we can have a drink or something. And we can catch up. Hell awesome. yes, we can. But thank you so much for your time. I wish you all the best. It's been an absolute pleasure. Uh, she is Shaw Guerrero. We are insiders. Thank you. <laughs>